Good morning and welcome to today's message. It is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. And I want to ask a question before we start. Give you a chance to open your Bible there. And then ask this question. Today, May 17th of 2020, is anybody in America content? Philippians chapter 4. Not that I speak from want, Paul the Apostle writes, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. That's the focus for today. I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means. I know how to live in prosperity in every each circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There are several reasons why God gave us the Bible, the Word of God. Foremost, the Bible has as its goal the intention of teaching us about the nature of God, the character of God, the person of God. It's essentially not a textbook about science or geology or history. It does contain history, and archaeology has confirmed the history of the Bible, but that's not its purpose. Its purpose is to teach us about God. The Bible never sets out to prove the existence of God either. It just starts its opening words with this, in the beginning, God. The first three chapters of the Bible in the book of Genesis are some of the most significant in the entire Bible. They teach the existence of God before all things. Then they teach his creative power and his wisdom. It teaches us about the nature of humanity in our original righteous state. In other words, when we were innocent and pure, of which we're obviously not any longer. Just turn on any nightly news and you'll see it's not true anymore. It teaches us about our fall into sin and death. It teaches about marriage, family, the role of humans with the earth we live in, today that's commonly called the environment, along with parenting, work, society, and government, just to name some. The Bible teaches us about the design of life why God created us, and how he expects us to live. The Bible is a coherent, God-ordained book of truth. The Bible is clear in its teaching that we live in a world that has fallen. This world is not the way that God intended or wanted it to be. It's now filled with evil, violence, famine, war, death, pestilence, Pestilence is a word that means disease, and diseases such as coronavirus, COVID-19. The Bible is insistent also when it says that ultimately this world cannot satisfy our needs, our wants, our desires. And Paul learned that lesson. He writes, that during his life he had much, and there were times when he had little. He had what we would call a full checking account and an empty one. He knew hunger, he says. For us, that's a full refrigerator or one that's empty. He knew what it was to be able to move freely as he wished, wherever he wanted to preach the gospel. He also knew what it was like to be in prison on lockdown by the government and having had everything and then having had nothing, Paul learned and he uses this one short phrase, I have learned to be content. So let's go back to that question that I started with. How many people across America today are content? For most Americans, and it's true for most, most churchgoers also, contentment 
seems to be more tied in with the circumstances of our life rather than to what Paul is going to teach us today about his contentment in the presence of God and his care. In 1995, Robert Samuelson wrote a terrific book entitled The Good Life and Its Discontents. It has the subtitle, The American Dream in an Age of Entitlement. So here's a quote from the inside cover of that book. Since the Second World War, we here in America have created unprecedented prosperity, permitting more Americans than ever before to live as they see fit. We convinced ourselves that we could solve all social problems and build society that would virtually ensure universal personal happiness. We feel the country hasn't lived up to the promise and we are right, but the fault lies with the promise as well as the performance. How is it that any government in the world could promise universal personal happiness and then fulfill it? What we have done is engender a psychology of entitlement. Entitlement invited perpetual disappointment because when the promise isn't fulfilled that you'll be happy, then we are discontent. If better, that means always making things here better is the destination, then there is never any arrival at the destination and there's always continual frustration at the endlessness of the journey. In contrast to that, Paul writes, I've learned to be content. So let's look at that word content. It doesn't mean that we've given into a spirit of resignation as if to say, well, things will never get better, so I'll just learn to live with the way things are. Paul was not a quitter. He didn't wilt or fold in the face of resistance. This was one tough man, but he understood that life had its ups and downs and he experienced them. That's the whole sense of having and not having, being hungry and being filled he discovered that even being in the middle of God's will, Paul knew there would be times when life would be hard. Handling the bumps in the road, handling the setbacks of life, handling mistreatment at the hands of others with contentment takes learning. Paul was content for several reasons. He discovered that God would take care of him in whatever circumstances he found himself in. He learned to be content because he discovered God would take care of him. He learned that by going through hard times. It's easy to be content when things are well, but when things get tough, but you discover God takes care of you when things are tough, then you can learn contentment. He knew that all the other kingdoms and governments of this world would disappear and that ultimately only God's kingdom would rule forever. How did he learn that? He learned that by reading the Bible and believing what it says about Christ and his kingdom. Paul knew that we would all leave this world one day and his final destination and our final destination is to be with Christ forever. Paul had learned that there was enough grace in the gospel to teach him and help him to learn contentment. Either we believe the good news about God's love, about the reality of heaven, which I have not yet seen, but we will be in one day, or we allow ourselves to be discontent with our current situation and don't allow faith in God and his truths about life and heaven to shape our contentment. Paul learned to live for something bigger than just himself. When we place ourselves at the middle of our focus our purpose, our reason for existing at all, eventually we ensure our own discontentment. Pastor Rick Warren of Saddleback Church wrote this, to expect life to be tailored to our expectations is to invite frustration. And can I add discontentment? Paul learned that God offers so many blessings that I would call it fills in the cracks of life when it gets hard. 
When life doesn't go according to our own expectations, which tends to be more often than not, God's grace, his peace, his love, his forgiveness, his presence fills in all those cracks of life. Paul learned that there was strength enough in Christ's help for him because he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we either learn to accept the strength and the help Christ gives us, or we are allow ourselves to continue to grow discontented in our circumstances. There isn't a DVD package that you can buy that gives special lessons on how to be content. Life offers its own lessons and we all go through it. And we all learn. I don't have any secret words for you today on how to become content. No special knowledge. I am a fellow struggler, a fellow learner with everyone. We all learn. We remind ourselves of God's love. We see God's care. We pray and ask God to help us. We look forward to heaven. And in the meantime, we see Christ's presence and we bring all our needs to God in prayer. And we learn. We learn to be content. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of grace through Jesus. We are reminded, as you told Paul, that your grace is sufficient for us and that in our weakness, your strength, your power is perfected. Help us learn to be content in wherever we find ourselves. Not resignation, but just a settled peace, knowing that you love us, that we are in the middle of your will, and that one day Christ is coming back to establish his eternal kingdom and we will be with him forever. And surely that's enough to make all of us content. We praise you today. And we remind ourselves, as always, we are in your grip. God bless.